Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I welcome all in today's lecture on pathology. Today is 21st lecture on pathology and this is the day 7 lecture on inflammation. On day 6 lecture on inflammation, I have told you about free radicals and last part of acute inflammation. Today's topic is chronic inflammation. Now come to first definition of chronic inflammation. Active inflammation active inflammation with with tissue distraction and attempt of healing and attempt of healing so active inflammation with tissue distraction and attempt of healing is called chronic inflammation. Dear audience, we know inflammation means reaction of vascularized living tissue to local injurious agent. So, this reaction is active and associated with tissue distraction at the site of inflammation and there is attempt of healing at the site of inflammation. It is called chronic inflammation. Now come to the characteristics of chronic inflammation. The characteristics are gradual onset of reaction, gradual onset of tissue reaction, then prolonged tissue reaction. And at the site of chronic inflammation, proliferation of proliferation of fibroblast and blood vessels. And it is associated with certain cells. These are the chronic inflammatory cells. So these are the characteristics of chronic inflammation. So it is there is tissue distraction and attempt of healing. Now we can cite an example where you can get tissue distraction and side by side attempt of healing. Example, example of a chronic inflammation where you can get tissue distraction along with attempt of healing. Example is chronic osteomyelitis. chronic osteomyelitis. Respected audience, you know infection of bone and bone marrow is called osteomyelitis. Suppose this is a bone long bone like this. This is the medullary cavity. This is the cortex and this is the peristium. The root one is peristium. If there is chronic inflammation here, infection here, it is called chronic osteomyelitis. In chronic osteomyelitis, a piece of bone undergoes distraction and it becomes dead. And this dead and destroyed bone piece is called sequestrum. So, tissue distraction example in chronic osteomyelitis, sequestrum. Sequestrum. This is a destroyed and dead piece of bone in chronic osteomyelitis. So this is an example of tissue distraction in chronic osteomyelitis in, or in chronic inflammation. Attempt of healing, there is formation of new bone here, new bone here with the help of peristium. So per, with the help of peristium a new bone is formed and this is called involucrum. So 
So sequestrum is the example of case distraction and involucrum, newborn formation is the example of attempt of healing. Now come to types of chronic inflammation or classification of chronic inflammation. One is chronic specific inflammation. Another is chronic non-specific inflammation. Now come to chronic specific inflammation first. The chronic inflammation where the tissue changes is very much specific for the causative agent. That chronic inflammation is called chronic specific inflammation. Example like tuberculosis. You know tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So if anybody suffers from tuberculosis either in the lung pulmonary or extra pulmonary whatever on this side at the site of tuberculosis we will get tissue changes there is caseous necrosis there is giant cell and etc and granuloma the tissue changes that we find in tuberculosis that change is not found in any diseases or any infections so tuberculosis is chronic specific inflammation another is syphilis you know it is caused by trypanoma pallidum so if anybody suffers from syphilis at the site of infection there is a specific tissue changes and that tissue changes is not found in tuberculosis or in any diseases so tuberculosis syphilis all are the chronic specific inflammation Now come to what are the types of chronic specific inflammation. Chronic specific inflammation is again divided into divided into chronic specific granulomatous inflammation. Chronic specific granulomatous inflammation. So, the chronic specific inflammation, while we get granuloma formation, that chronic specific inflammation is called chronic specific granulomatous inflammation. Here you will get formation of granuloma. Here you will get formation of granuloma. Another is chronic specific non granulomatous. non granulomatous inflammation so the chronic specific inflammation or is no granuloma formation that chronic specific inflammation is called chronic specific non granulomatous inflammation now come to chronic non specific inflammation chronic non specific inflammation Derodens, the chronic non-specific inflammation is that type of chronic inflammation where the tissue change is not specific for the causative agent. We can set example chronic inflammation caused by streptococcus or caused by staphylococcus. In both cases, we can get abscess. Abscess is nothing but collection of pus in tissue or in hollow viscous lined by pyogenic membrane. Suppose this is abscess. 
and this abscess may be caused by staphylococcus and also by staphylococcus so there is no specific change for the staphylococcus or for the staphylococcus so this is chronic non specific inflammation now come to what are the causes of chronic inflammation what are the causes of chronic inflammation now come to causes of chronic inflammation number 1 persistent infection with intracellular organism respected audience you know inflammation caused by microorganism or microbes it is called infection so if any will suffer from infection and that infection persistent with intracellular organism it will cause chronic inflammation example tubercle bacillus it causes tuberculosis if anybody is infected with tubercle bacillus red bedded this is tubercle bacillus it is engulfed by macrophage it is engulfed by macrophage it is engulfed by macrophage but the macrophage cannot digest it so it remains as persistent infection as intracellular organism then prolonged prolonged exposure prolonged exposure to certain to certain non degradable prolonged exposure to certain non degradable substances example like silica respected audience you know silica is not degraded in our body within the cell because there is no enzymes to degrade it so if anybody is exposed for long time to silica it will lead to silicosis it is nothing but the causes of chronic inflammation prolonged exposure to certain non degradable substances another cause another cause is immune reaction immune reaction to individuals own tissue immune reaction to individuals own tissue the audience you know we have got immune system immune system in our body gives us protection against the immunogen against the pathogen against the injurious agents and this immune system immune system in our body it knows which one is own it can recognize is each and every particle each and every protein each and every tissue component of our body and all the components of tissue or tissue cell is very much known to immune system so there is harmonious environment in our body if due to any region certain own individuals own tissue is not recognized as own by immune system in that case immune system will produce antibody antibody against individuals own tissue or individuals own protein and the antibody formed it is called autoantibody 
autoantibody and the autoantibody formed against the protein is treated as self antigen and so there is antigen antibody reaction and it will lead to chronic inflammation example rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis you know rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammation so these are the causes of chronic inflammation another cause another cause is repeated bout of acute inflammation repeated bout of acute inflammation if anybody is exposed to acute inflammation and it patient is recovered again in the same tissue if there is acute inflammation patient again recovers the third time or fourth time the patient may develop chronic inflammation and this is repeated bout of acute inflammation may lead to chronic inflammation again acute inflammation acute inflammation may turn to acute inflammation may turn to chronic inflammation the audience know there are some fate or outcomes of acute inflammation one of the outcome of acute inflammation it may turn to chronic inflammation so these are the different causes of acute inflammation there is a term de novo chronic inflammation now come to de novo chronic inflammation what do you mean by about de novo chronic inflammation the chronic inflammation that initiates as chronic it is called de novo chronic inflammation chronic inflammation chronic inflammation that initiates as chronic is called de novo chronic inflammation example of de novo chronic inflammation is tuberculosis 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 either extra pulmonary or pulmonary caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis is not initiated as acute rather it initiates as chronic so this is example of de novo chronic inflammation if you want to know what are the causes of de novo chronic inflammation if you want to know the causes of de novo chronic inflammation is immune reaction to individuals own tissue the causes of de novo chronic inflammation is persistent intracellular organism and also prolonged exposure to certain non degradable substances these are the different examples of de novo chronic inflammation Dear audience, good afternoon to this. Thanks all.